friend, uh, Frank Hernandez. Um, he's there also for natural pest control. Uh, he's a volunteer also. He's a volunteer to be here. Uh, we don't pay him nothing. Uh, he has a great podcast, uh, uh, Facebook, etc. Uh, he's an amazing teacher. So, Frank, you're here. Did he mention free? So that's the best part. Yeah, you can't complain too much when it's free, even if he sucks. Uh, <laughs> and this next class, and let's see, are you, are you doing it over there? Yes. All right. So, all right, we're going to be doing the pesticide module. And it's a very funny module when you're in a fertilizer class to take a pesticide class. So if you're here today and you are a pest control technician, you're a CPO, uh, you're going to be highly bored. Uh, this is a core class, pretty much, on, on pesticide, pesticide safety, on PPE, and on licensing. So you're going to be, you know, like I said, uh, bored as heck. If you're a landscaper, you're pretty much going to be pissed at me the whole time. Uh, so I just warn you, it's going to be an interesting class. The first thing you've got to ask yourself is, why the heck do they have a pesticide module in a fertilizer class? Well, there's uh, a law in the state of Florida, uh, mostly two laws, uh, 482 and chapter 487, which is the state statute, that governs pesticide application. And you say, what does that have to do with me? I'm a landscaper. It has to do with most of the time people don't understand they're illegally applying pesticides. Uh, they don't understand they're in the pest control business and they don't understand that they're governed by laws and rules and they must be licensed. Nobody gets a pass in the state of Florida. The state of Florida is one of those states where everyone absolutely must be licensed, even if you're government, uh, if you work for a city, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they want everyone to be licensed, certified in some way to apply a pesticide. So, by the end of this class, you're going to have to do three, four, five things. Describe the laws and licenses, that regulate pesticide application, explain integrated pest management concepts, explain the environmental hazards involved with pesticide application, interpret and implement information on the pesticide label, minimize personal exposure when using pesticides. Most people don't even realize there's a label that you have to follow. Most people have never seen the label, even though they've carried a, a gallon a two gallon and a half jug of glyphosate on their truck for 20 years and realize that that, uh, that requires you to understand that label. First thing you've got to ask yourself is, if you're applying a pesticide, what is a pest? So you got to have your, ask your question, what is a pest? Well, if you've got a weed, it's a pest. If you have an insect, it's a pest. If you have a mite, it's a pest. If you have a fungus, it's a pest. If you have a bacteria, it's a pest. Anything pretty much that kills something else is a pesticide. If you have a mold, it's a pest. So if you're going to apply any product to control anything in the state of Florida, I read on a blog somewhere that I could use Don dish soap to kill chinch bug on the lawn, and that isn't a pesticide. Oh, how wrong you are. The state of Florida requires that if you apply any product commercially, it must be not only labeled, but it must be registered in the state of Florida to use it. You use any off product that is not labeled, in, not registered in the state of Florida, it's illegal. Even FIFRA exempt, that are exempt from, uh, 25B exempt from uh, EPA registration, must be registered in the state of Florida. So if you apply Dawn dish soap to your fruit trees of your neighbor for money, you are essentially in the pest control business. It doesn't exempt you. They put up just, a, they wrapped everything around that law so that you have to do it.